Wonderful. We have a case here for uh, implant placement in site number 30. The tooth has been removed. I, I do not know how long it has been gone for, but uh, nonetheless, let's, it's a healed site, so we don't have any worry about any stability or immediate placement issues. So let's take a closer look at it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the implant line view. We can see our implant. Our implant here has been planned as a Strawman bone level implant, a 4.8 by 12, so certainly more than adequate in length. Um, I would like to see slightly wider implant, but you know, 4.8 and 5.0, not big difference, so we'll certainly go with that. So if we go through our checklist, uh, our mesiodistal positioning looks very nice, pretty well centered. Our buccal lingual positioning looks pretty well, nicely centered. Our bone level position, and this is where I first um, <clears throat> uh, noticed, uh, maybe I don't use the word error, but uh, some, some area of concern here. And what I'm noticing is if we take a look here is right here we can see this yellow line represents our tissue height and this is a planned implant. So it to me it looks like the implant is planned at the height of the tissue. So if we take a closer look and even here in the buccolingual view we can see that we're at the height of the tissue. So my guess would be that the bone is actually right down here. Okay. And sometimes with patients that are bigger, we have a harder time seeing that. So to help us here, let me go ahead and outline what I believe to be the bony outline of this case. So that's what I believe to be the bone height would be that green line. So here, even though we have a bone level implant, it looks as if it's planned at tissue height again based on the data that were presented. So um, one other thing I'd like to take a look at is right here we have captured enough of the CEREC data there and the tissue data. So uh, it's a great case for an opti guide. The integration is well done. I just think that our plan right here needs to probably drop to about right there. Now once we do that, now we bring in this lingual concavity which is going to bring me to our next point. And looking at this, while it looks like we're centered here buccolingually, what I'm really looking at is posterior molars, lower molars, are tilted in to the lingual. So our central, while we look like we're centered here, our central groove based on this design is actually right here. So what I would like to actually do is tilt this implant in to the lingual to get our central groove, get our implant lined up to a central groove. So instead of doing it from the platform of the implant, however, what I would like to do is do it from the apex of the implant, like so. So now by doing that, I not only get the implant centered nicely through the central groove, I also get away from that lingual concavity, and that kills two birds with one stone. So uh, everything else looks good. Our occlusal plane looks pretty nice. Our occlusal table looks pretty nice. So the, the la one of the last things we want to do is look at our sleeve position. So we'll come here, and the Strawman system has three different sleeve positions, 2 millimeters, 4 millimeters, and 6 millimeters. So it defaults to the 4 millimeter. I change it to the 2 millimeter here for purpose. And on purpose, I did that here so the 2 millimeter, you can see, runs into the tissue. Now what that means is this sleeve can be used, but you're going to have to lay a flap and remove the tissue out of the way. So alternatively, what we can do here is we can go to the 4 millimeter height. And what we'll see here is the 4 millimeter height works. Uh, and we'll go through our 360 view here to make sure right there. See, let me uh, get it to a different view. Right there. So right here, we can see that even at four millimeters, the sleeve is hitting. Now, is that an issue? Can we push it down enough? Will our tissue punch take care of some of that? These are the questions. So this is why it's important to go through this so we may decide here that we want to go 6 millimeters because 6 millimeters can definitely give us the clearance that we need. Uh, the negative in 6 millimeters versus 4 millimeters, and 6 millimeters requires a longer drill and patients with limited opening, uh, that's one thing we have to look out for. So the last thing I'll show you here, right click, clip along active slice, come in here, and what I often like to do is come here and look at the implant from this view. And now I can see 
that our implant is leaned like these teeth are leaned. So we're really going to be supporting this tooth extremely well. So one last thing is I think we're a little closer here on the distal than on the mesial. And then in looking at this, I can also tell us that our design isn't absolutely perfect. So this design actually needs to be rotated. We can see the central groove of these teeth are right here. Let's draw a line. Central groove. Central groove. And our central groove of this tooth is actually like so. So in designing our Cerec restoration, we need to rotate our design here. So this is to give us an idea. So uh, overall, our plan is pretty good. Right here, again, we can see in our plan that we're closer to the distal than the mesial. So either we will move the implant over uh, or we'll tilt it. But in tilting it, we affect the occlusal load here. So it's a matter of which one we believe is better. Thank you very much.